Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm going to give it just one moment to make sure everyone's able to join us before the class officially begins. And while we wait, I'm just going to share a few resources with you. Um, first, I want to thank you all who are already here for joining us this evening. My name is Dakota Wagner, and I have the pleasure of working for the CSU Alumni Association, bringing events both virtual and in person to all of our alums nationwide. Um, I'd love to take a second, if you are already on, to get to know each of you a little bit better. So if you could take a moment to put in the comments section where you're watching from and if you're an alum, what year you graduated, wherever you are tuning in from, we're so glad to have you. I would also like to take a quick second to thank all of our Alumni Association members who are here viewing this evening. Membership makes such a big impact on the CSU community. It makes events like this possible. And we're just super appreciative of all of you members who are out there. Um, if you're interested in membership, I'll have a link for that in the comments here shortly. And there's a QR code here on the screen for you to download our mobile app. Um, we have many virtual, in-person, and hybrid events coming up. We have a lot of virtual events available to you on our YouTube channel. Um, just a lot of fun things on the horizon for 2022. And the best way to learn about all of that is by downloading our mobile app. So you can scan that QR code here on the screen to get access to all of those resources. I will also be sharing links to all of those things, um, our events calendar, our YouTube channel, all of that in the comments here shortly as well. So you can keep an eye out for that. The recording of this class, as well as all of the um, resources and recipes and materials are all gonna be available to you afterwards. If you'd like to share them with your friends and family or just reference them again, you'll receive all of that in an email um, next week. And lastly, later on in this event, um, I'll have a survey link in the chat so that you can give us your feedback and tell us how you like the class and what you'd like to see from us in the future. Um, so keep an eye out for that at the end of the class. We would really love your feedback. And that is all from me. I am now gonna turn things over to your amazing presenters from the Kendall Reagan Nutrition Center. Tonight we have Nancy, Annie, Megan, and Heather. And I'm gonna get them out of here shortly so they can introduce themselves and get the class going. Thanks so much for being here. Well, hi everyone. My name is Nancy Gannam. I'm the graduate teaching assistant at the Kendall Reagan Nutrition Center. And I'll be leading the cooking class tonight along with Heather, Megan, and Annie. Um, I'll uh, hand it off to, uh, to Heather to introduce herself. Uh, hi, I'm Heather. I'm a nutrition dietetic student here, uh, undergraduate student here at CSU. And then Annie, you want to go next? Annie, you're muted. Hi, I'm Annie. I'm also a, I'm a fourth year nutrition student at CSU, about to graduate next week. And I'm working with the Kendall Nutrition Center this semester. Cool, and Megan? Hi guys, I'm Megan. I'm a health and exercise science major and I'm a senior this year. Thank you, cool. So before we get started, I just wanna make sure that for those folks who are cooking along with us, that they have already washed their hands and have hopefully followed um, the to do before class list that was um, attached or was part of the participant packet that Dakota sent to the participants. Um, so we hope that there are a few things that we want to make sure that you've done prior to us starting the class because our class is gonna be a little bit fast paced and if you're not prepared, you're more than likely to fall a little bit behind because we only have 90 minutes to get through the, the full recipes. So if you haven't already, please make sure to uh, preheat your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is for our acorn squash recipe as well as the um, soup recipe. And then also, if you haven't already, please make sure that you have pre-measured all the ingredients and have it ready to go so that you can just use them as we go along the recipes. And then finally, uh, that you've cut your acorn squash and de-seeded them. Um, if you haven't already, I would um, suggest uh, starting with preheating the oven because that's the most important thing. It takes a while for the oven to preheat. And then um, you can, if you haven't pre-measured your ingredients, then you can just try to keep up and get your ingredients as we go through each of the recipes. With that being said, the order of the recipes for tonight are going to be the roasted acorn squash salad, 
the roasted broccoli and microgreen soup, the brown butter basil shortbread, chicken skewers, and microgreen um, chimichurri. And with that being said, I'm going to lead off the first recipe for tonight, which is the roasted acorn um, squash salad. So like I said, one of the things that you hopefully have done if you chose to cook along with us, and I know a lot of uh, folks just choose to watch and then do the recipes later. So one of the things that uh, was you know asked from the participants to do before is to just cut and de your, your acorn squash, which should take just a couple minutes if you haven't already done so. Uh, that being said, I'm going to start with cutting my acorn squash into wedges, and then I'm going to move into cutting it into one inch uh, chunks, getting it ready to be placed in the oven uh, for 25 minutes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure to have my hand that's not going to be, um, that I'm not going to be using it um, to hold a knife in a bare claw position, and this to uh, prevent any um, accidents tonight in terms of cutting your uh, fingers with the knife, especially when you're dealing with something as, you know, sturdy and tough to cut as an acorn squash, you might be tempted uh, to have your fingers laid out flat. Just make sure that you keep it, um, you keep your finger knuckles tucked in uh, during the whole process so that you prevent um, cutting yourself. So that being said, I'm also going to hold uh, the knife blade with my index finger and my thumb like so, because this is uh, more sturdy and more balanced than just holding the knife of the handle. And again, especially when you're cutting something as tough as a, um, as a squash. So the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to uh, cut in half lengthwise. So first, I'm just going to get the middle of my knife in. And I'm going to use my other hand to support the one hand that's cutting so that it's easier to get through the squash. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other half. And then what I'm going to do next is that I'm just going to cut this in about, I'm going to try to do three wedges. Same thing here. This one is a little bit smaller, so maybe I'll just go for two. Again, it's just very important to watch for the placement of your fingers when you're cutting your squash. And for this one, I'm actually just going to go for three. Oops, maybe not like that. And then same thing here as well. And now that I have my wedges, I'm just going to clear up some space on my tray here, on my cutting thing. And then I'm just going to cut it into one inch chunks. So I'm just going to eyeball it. Um, I think it's about this big. And I'm going to place it on my tray for now. I'm just going to go through all my wedges. And with these ones, I think I could make it a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to cut through it, make it two pieces. And I'm going to try to make all the pieces that I'm cutting as even as possible so that the cooking time for all of the uh, chunks is even. And then for those folks who are cooking with us, if at any point you want us to slow down or you feel like you just need some time to catch up, feel free to uh, send a message in the text box and then we will slow down so that we're all on the same page. 
And then I have my final wedge here. That's it. And then now what I'm going to do is just toss my acorn squash with a tablespoon of olive oil. So I have my measuring tablespoon over here. I'm just going to evenly spread that over the squash. And then I'm also going to be adding a quarter teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of smoked paprika. So I've already measured that before the class. So I have all of it over here. And then I'm just going to sprinkle that over squash here. Again, that's a teaspoon of paprika and a quarter teaspoon of salt. And then I'm just going to mix that using my hands just to make sure they're all nice and evenly coated with our spices and the olive oil. And then I already have my oven preheated to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm already done over here with cutting the squash and uh, spreading spices all over it. So I'm going to place this in the oven 425 degrees for 25 minutes. And then I'm going to hand it over to Annie to uh, get us through the uh, soup recipe. So next we're going to be cooking the broccoli and microgreen soup. Microgreens are going to be highlighted in a lot of our recipes today. They're a great addition to dishes. And one of the best aspects of them is that they can be easily grown year round because they can be grown inside with very minimal effort. So go ahead for this recipe, start by preheating your oven to 425 if you haven't already. Then we're gonna go through chopping our broccoli, our half of an onion and our three cloves of garlic. So for our broccoli, we have, this is pretty small. So I got two heads of uh, broccoli. So we're going to start by cutting the bottom off just to get rid of some of that um, tougher part of the broccoli. You should leave about an inch to two inches, um, maybe under, right directly under where the broccoli starts to branch. Go ahead and pull off those excess leaves. I'm going to do that with the other one as well. All right, so from here we have our cleaned up broccoli. Um, I'm going to just start cutting them where they branch off. So each little branch is going to be its own floret. So once you have your broccoli florets, if they're bigger, if they're like maybe this size or bigger, you can go ahead and cut those in half. Safest way to do it is by placing the broccoli on its side and then just chopping right down the middle and try to make sure that all of your florets are relatively the same size. Um, if you'd like as well, you can kind of cut the ends off to make them just a little bit shorter so they're easier to work with in our soup. So go ahead and finish up cutting all your broccoli if you're cooking along with us. I will do the same thing and then we will move on to chopping our onion. Great, so now that we've got all of our broccoli ready to ready to go, um, we're gonna move on to the onion. Start with about half an onion. If you have a full onion, go ahead and chop off both ends, peel the skin off, and then you can chop along with me here. So we're gonna take the onion, should be, if it's not already cut in half, go ahead and do that. From here, we're gonna grab above the onion. It's gonna be hard for you to see for a minute simply because of how I'm holding it. But then we will cut small pieces, just small slivers. How you cut this is largely up to you. I'm going to cut it into smaller pieces because I think it'll fit better in our soup. 
So go ahead and then cut back the other direction. Again, like Nancy said, trying to hold in that claw grip so you don't end up cutting yourself. Now that we've got our onion cut, all you have to do next is finish peeling your garlic. So when you get that clove of garlic, go ahead and cut off just both ends right there. And then it should be pretty easy to peel off that dry skin layer. Great, so you should end up with three cloves that are nice and smooth along the outside. After that, we are going to take our pan, fill it with two tablespoons of olive oil. Mine is already pre-measured, but you can go ahead and do that yourselves. Then a quarter teaspoon of salt. And then throw those veggies into the pan. So once they're all in there, like Nancy said earlier, you can go ahead and mix them around with your hands just to make sure that they're all coated with olive oil and salt. When you feel like they're adequately coated, we're gonna place them in the oven and let them roast for about 25 minutes. Roasting them is gonna kind of help bring out some of that flavor, um, which will be a great addition to that soup. So go ahead, get them coated. Then I'm going to put them in my oven and we can forget about it for about 25 minutes. Um, so I am going to pass off to Megan um, and she's going to help you guys through the brown butter and basil shortbread. Perfect. Hello everyone. So I'm going to do the whole entire recipe for the brown butter basil shortbread. So I just want to make sure everyone has some uh, salted or unsalted butter, doesn't matter either one, uh, some basil, some granulated sugar and some a little bit of salt if you need to, a egg yolk, and some flour. So I'm gonna get started right away and uh, brown that butter. So you open up that butter packet and get that stove in your pan or stove in a medium heat. Let's put that in here and we'll get that on the stove right away. And then we'll get started with doing the basil. So everyone wants to Look over here. I got my three leaves of basil here already washed. Um, an easier way to chop them up is actually to roll it nice and tight. And we're going to take our small knife and do it in a, in a um, this kind of motion, making these nice small slivers for that basil. And again, making sure you have that bear claw. Make sure we're not chopping up our fingers. Perfect. All nice and chopped up. You can even do more if you want a rougher chop. And we'll make sure to keep checking on that brown butter while it's getting heated up. And so another fun fact is that basil is actually used as a medicine um, in like tra traditional Chinese medicine and to, thought to have uh, therapeutic properties. It was really cool. So again, just getting that more of a rough chop. Get that going. Perfect. So we'll leave that on the side here. And we'll definitely go and check on that pot. And see how that brown butter's going. Got a little bit. It's half melted right now. Keep watching that. Stir that as needed. Perfect. So what we can also do, if you did not already, is buddy your pan. I do not have an eight inch brown pan, pan, but I just have this clear one. It's about eight inches. So just make sure you use a stick of butter and grease all the sides of it. Get all nice and coated. So then when we're all done baking, it will pop right out nice and easy. Perfect. Nice, make sure it's nicely coated all on the sides, a little bit higher on the sides, just in case when it rises up. All right, so set that aside. Put our butter back. 
So give this more of a chop if you need to. Definitely check on that brown butter. Mine's slowly starting to go, getting a little bit warm. Keep that stirring. And we want more of a, a brown amber color. And that's actually having um, the milk solids turning out um, into that color. That's why you get the brown from that. And uh, it also is cooking out the butter, which will give you that really good nutty aroma from that brown butter. So we're just gonna keep watch on this um, on this pan with the butter right now. Should be done somewhat soon. It takes just about a couple minutes, about three to four. Just stirring that with a wooden spoon. All right. And then if not, so um, I'm using a uh, salted butter already, but again, if you do have unsalted butter, just make sure you have a, just a quarter of a teaspoon of salt to put in that recipe as well. Again, we've got that butter going a little bit. It's not too brown just yet, maybe like one more minute. Make sure to keep stirring so don't burn it. there. Perfect. So you're going to start smelling that little bit of that nutty aroma and seeing that amber color come out soon with the butter. And then we're going to place it in a mixing bowl and let it cool. Perfect, everyone. Okay. Should almost be done. One more minute left. So we want to make sure this butter cools at the end so that we're actually not cooking the sugar or the egg yolk for this recipe. Mine seems almost about done. It should be really bubbly and almost fluffy looking. And you can see that amber color right in the bottom. So we'll turn that heat off. I'm trying to show you on. So it should be a little bit fluffy and buttery. And so we'll put that in our mixing bowl right over here and let that cool down for a little bit until we get all the other ingredients ready. Perfect. We'll set that on the side. So another thing I wanted to show you guys is that when we do, um, we measure out some of our ingredients, we can scoop it in. And if there's a little extra on top, you can take a, uh, a spatula and we can scrape it along the top and push it all away. So it's perfectly ready. So we have a third of a cup of sugar already ready on this side. This away. And we'll get our flour ready and do the same thing with both of those. Another way to help with their flour, if it's hard in the bottom, you can scoop it up, gonna get it fluffy again. Get all nice and fluffy ready. Then we'll take our one fourth. Again, we'll just scoop it and cross the top to make sure it's all even. Perfect. We have our one fourth cup and we have our one cup. Just make sure you have one, one cup of flour and a fourth cup of flour and one third cup of sugar. Put it on the side. And still letting that brown butter cool for a little bit. And we can also, we're going to just use just the egg yolk for part of this recipe. So you can have a little, little glass Tupperware and crack the egg yolk. And we can try to hold that yolk in there so all the egg whites come out. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump this in the sink, the egg whites. So we're not going to use those at all. And then leave the egg egg yolk right in that little cup. And then make sure to wash your hands after we use that. Perfect. Get everything ready. So now that we have everything ready, again, if you did not uh, use 
uh, unsalted butter, make sure we have a fourth of a teaspoon of salt as well on our plate here. So, right. check the temperature of here. It's getting somewhat cool down. Um, let's see. So actually using the egg yolks um, will give the shortbread some kind of healthy fats for preventing and also preventing the uh, shortbread from separating. And definitely, like I said before, flour easily sells at the bottom. So if you use a whisk and stuff or any kind of spatula to help get it fluffy again, that will be good. All right. This seems pretty cool. So again, we're going to get started. So let's do, so let's add the sugar. So one third cup of sugar. It's going to go in here right away. And you want to mix that together a little bit. Get this kind of consistency. And then also add the one fourth uh, tablespoon of uh, salt if you did not already. Mix it together. All right. So, and we'll add the egg yolk alone and get that, put that in there. Chop that up a little bit to get that fully combined. Stir it around. The spatula or a whisk, either one. I'm just using a spatula. And, all right, and so let's add that flour now. So I'm gonna add the fourth a cup first. I'm kind of getting that nice consistency. We wanna fluff that in, mix it in not too hard. If I can make sure the flour's out. All right, then we're gonna add the cup in. I'm gonna do a half of that cup first. Make it easier to combine. And then right now with this, we're getting kind of a little bit harder. I'm gonna add the basil in there. Just make sure you sprinkle that all in there. That'll cut up. Perfect and get that slowly combined as well. Perfect, and we're gonna do that last cup. Good. It's to be a little bit harder combining this. Still have too much liquid in here. So really make sure all that flour is incorporated. And then also adding dry ingredients into the wet will prevent the shortbread from getting clumpy. And if you wanted something clumpy like a coffee cake, you definitely add the wet to the dry. So we have, so basically all my flours incorporated into the shortbread. So we're gonna end up getting our greased pan out. We're gonna place all of our ingredients in there. We're gonna press it down and flatten it out. You can use your spatula or your fingers, whatever you feel like doing. Get that all even. Perfect. Get all nice. And sometimes you can get a little fancy with your shortbreads by cutting them afterwards when they're hot. You can put a little, um, We'll cutting things and make little trees or whatever's fun and festive. All right, so once this is all done, we're gonna put this in the fridge for 20 minutes to cool down, and then we'll put in the oven after that. So I'm gonna hand it off to the next person. Thank you. Hi everyone. Okay, we're back here with the squash recipe. 
And we have about seven more minutes left for the roasting of the squash. So in the meantime, let's get the other ingredients for the recipe ready. So our recipe calls for two um, garlic cloves. So I have that right here. And it also calls for quinoa and it calls for cilantro and jalapeno. So what I'm gonna start with is cooking the quinoa just because it takes a little bit longer to cook. So over here I have my pan and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add half a cup of just warm water, lukewarm water in here. And the amount of quinoa that we're using is quarter cup quinoa. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start heating my stove and I'm gonna place my pan on there. And I like to use this part of the stove just because it really fits the size of the pan. I don't want it to be oversized. So I'm just gonna relocate my ingredients real quick and I'm gonna move my stuff, okay. So I'm just going to put the pan over here and then I'm going to turn the heat to high, medium high, and then I'm going to add my quinoa, my quarter cup quinoa, and I'm going to give it a little bit of a quick stir just to make sure the quinoa is well dispersed into the pan and in the water. And what we're going to do next is that we're just going to bring it to a boil, which should take a a few minutes oops i turned on the wrong one so i have it around like seven the temperature is like seven so medium high i would say and again i'm just going to uh, leave it here to come to a boil and then after that we're going to put a lid on so let me grab the lid real quick as well so i have it ready here once it starts to boil okay, use the lid And then in the meantime, as the quinoa is cooking, I'm going to get started with the chopping of my ingredients. So Annie did show a nice way of um, cutting your, or basically um, peeling the garlic, but there's also another way that I want to show. There's so many ways to peel garlic, but uh, this one I prefer because I find it easier. Um, so if you, so the main thing before you do this method of uh, peeling your garlic is that you want to make sure that you have a thick blade knife. So if your knife is thin or your blade is not thick enough to basically fit the palm or the, no, the palm, yeah, it's basically the back of your hand or the palm, um, don't do this method because you're going to uh, cut yourself with the knife blade. So again, just make sure that you have a thick enough blade so that when you um, just crush the garlic with the palm of your hands, you're not cutting yourself. So that's really important uh, to make sure that you have. Um, so again, just like I um, elucidated er earlier, we're gonna be placing the thickest and widest uh, part of the blade on the garlic. And then with the palm of my hand, I'm just gonna um, crush it like that. And then basically what happens now is that when you crush the garlic, the peel automatically comes off. And if it doesn't automatically come off, it, it basically is just super easy to peel it in one single motion, just like I did. It's pretty easy. So again, the recipe calls for two garlic gloves. I did one, I'm gonna do the other one here with you. So this one is a little bit thicker. So again, I'm just gonna make sure that the thickest part of the knife or the blade of the knife is on the garlic and again, gonna crush it Oops. and then just peel it and then I'm just gonna remove the excess peel that fell on my cutting board so the quinoa has already come to a boil and that's because we don't have much water to begin with in here and we also don't have much quinoa so it didn't take long which is expected so what i'm going to do now is just basically turn the heat down to um medium low i'm basically going to turn it down to about a two and i'm going to cover that with my lid 
And I'm going to let it cook for 15 minutes. Heather, can you set a timer for 15 minutes? So it could take 15 minutes. It could take less, depending on just how much water there is and like how much volume your pan can hold. So if your volume, if your pan is a little bit narrow and the volume is, you know, it's it's still half a cup, but it's it's sort of um, not dispersed among, you know, a bigger distance. If that makes any sense, it's going to basically take um, a little bit less of time to come to a boil and for the quinoa to cook versus if you have a uh, narrower pan where the volume is sort of like, you know, building up or it's a little bit higher that might take a little bit longer. So I'm just going to keep an eye on it and going to check, uh, you know, going to basically take a look on it through the, um, you know, the transparent uh, lid over here and see if my water is absorbed or if it's still absorbing and just make sure that the quinoa doesn't get burned. Um, so what I'm trying to say is just don't like really depend on like 15 minutes as a set time to cook your quinoa. Just keep an eye on it. If the water is absorbed, then remove the lid and really check if it's um, cooked or not. And you know, as long as there's water in there, you should you should be fine. You don't have to worry about the quinoa burning. So that being said, I'm gonna start uh, chopping my garlic. So the recipe calls for crushed garlic, but since this is um, uh, going in my um, dressing, I don't want to have it crushed necessarily. This is just my personal preference. I'd like to have it, you know, really fine, uh, finely chopped or diced. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is just going to cut the end of the garlic, the two ends of the garlic. And then just before I get going, my um, question's ready. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a fork and just poke it. And if the fork goes in nice and easy, comes out nice and easy, and it's um, soft, um, that basically means it's cooked. If you have any resistance or not necessarily resistance, but if you feel like the squash is um, still a little bit harder for you to poke it with the fork, then it might need five to ten more minutes, just depending on how thick you've cut your oven, um, cut your squash, and um, how strong your 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 oven is in, in heating stuff. So I'm gonna check on the squash real quick. So mine is nice. Oh, mine is very soft. It's very easy to go through with the fork. So I'm going to take it out now. And... I'm just looking for some towels to place my spot so it doesn't burn um, my kitchen counter. And then I'm going to, you know, I don't really have to say this, but I'm going to turn off my oven, but don't turn off yours just yet because you have the broccoli in there and you need it on for about 15 or so more minutes, just depending on when you put the broccoli on. Just don't turn your oven just um, off just yet. And now I'm just going to um, go ahead and dice my garlic. Again, I'm cutting the ends of the garlic first. I'm not going to eat that. Just cutting it first into little circles. And then what I'm going to do is just combine them together in the small um, area. And then I'm just going to chop. So I really like garlic in all my foods. So if you feel like you're the same way and you want to add more garlic, feel free to do that. And also for the seasonings that we have used to season the squash, we've used paprika so far and used salt. If you feel like you want to use something else, you can definitely do that. You can use garlic powder, onion powder, um, in addition to the paprika or take it out. You can use crushed pepper, just really whatever seasonings you like to have um, on your squash and whatever you like to taste when your salad is ready. So I like the thickness and the size of my garlic, so I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm just going to take it out from my cutting board and just put it in a bowl just so I can um, create space for other stuff on the bowl. And this. 
Heather, how much is uh, how long is left? Fifteen minutes. Ten. I'm gonna just quickly check on my quinoa. So I have quite a bit of water left. So I, I'm good on the time here. Good on the amount of quinoa left. So uh, next, what I'm gonna do is chop my cilantro. So it's already uh, pre-washed and it's ready to be cut. Um, so what I like to do, some people, you know, like to take the leaves off the stem and just cut the leaves, but uh, I mean, the stems are edible, they're full of nu nutrients, and um, as long as you cut them nice um, and small, you're not really going to feel them texture-wise um, in your food, unless you're really sensitive to texture, and that's totally up to you how you want to go about cutting your cilantro, but I'm going to be cutting it with the stem, so what I'm going to do is just fold it nice and tight like this. And then what I'm gonna do is hold it in place and then just chop away. Again, I'm keeping my fingers in that bear claw position to make sure I don't accidentally cut the tip of my finger. And then what I'm gonna do is just keep going back and forth, side to side with that cutting motion to make sure I get every single bit of my cilantro nice and cut. And then you can also go the other way and just go pretty much all ways to make sure that you don't miss any of the cilantro you have. If you're cooking with us, go ahead and take out that broccoli now. Um, should be browned. The onions you should notice are soft and brown. Um, and you can go ahead, set those out and reset your oven to 375 so we can put the brown, uh, the brown buttered basil shortbread in after this. Let's go ahead, finish with Nancy, and then we'll go back to the soup. Take out that broth. Thanks, Annie. So I'm just going to reiterate. So it's time to take out the broccoli, the onions, and the garlic for the soup recipe from the oven. And then don't turn off your oven just yet, but turn it down to 375 because that's the temperature that we're going to place the um, shortbread in once we take it out from the uh, fridge. I'm going to check on my quinoa here real quick. Still have a little bit of liquid left. So I would say I would give this like five more minutes, if not less. And then I'm going to take it off the heat. And then I'm just going to move my cilantro to the side a little bit, create more space. For my final thing that I'm cooking, for the final thing that I'm cutting here in this recipe, which is the jalapeno. And I like to wear gloves when I'm cutting these. Just because. Sometimes they're a little bit hot, and um, it's really hard to get rid of that, you know, spiciness off of your fingers. And, you know, I tend to touch my face quite a bit. Um, so I'm more susceptible to getting that into my eyes, and it's not fun. So I just want to protect myself. If you don't have gloves, though, I would just say you can use your fingers, but just make sure really wash them uh, thoroughly after... Um, You've cut your jalapeno. So there's so many ways to cut your jalapeno, and we're only using half of it. But honestly, I'm, I might just use the whole thing because I'm not going to use jalapeno for any other recipe anytime soon, so I'm not going to let it go to waste. So what I like to do is just like I said, or like I just did, I cut it in half first, just like I did like that. And then I cut it in half lengthwise. And then what I like to do is just using a teaspoon or something, I just want to scoop out the seeds or um, whatever that's on the inside. I think seeds is appropriate to use to call that. Um, so I'm just going to do that for both halves over here. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to go ahead and dice. I'm just going to fold them over each other like that. And I hope you can see things well over here. And then just cut. And just depending on like how, um, you know, how much you want to feel them in the, in, in the dressing and the salad, uh, you can decide how big you want them to be. Um, I don't want to, you know, be chewing on them for too long or something in my salad. So I'm just going to cut them uh, nice and small. And then, like I said, just my personal preference, I'm going to use the other half of the jalapeno. It might be a little bit too spicy for some people, but if you don't mind the spice, 
can always add extra jalapeno in there. And I just removed that very top piece. And again, I'm just going to cut it in half lengthwise. I'm going to use a teaspoon, or you can even use your hands uh, for that matter to remove the, the seeds and um, the stem from here. And I'm going to use my hand for this one just to show you that I can do that as well. You don't have to be fancy and use a teaspoon. And then again, I'm just going to fold it over each other or place it over each other. And then again, just cut away. Do the same thing, just going sideways. Make sure I get every little piece so it's nice and diced. Okay, so it looks good to me. It's nice and finely diced. Oops. And I'm just going to quickly check on my quinoa as well. It's nice and cooked, and I'm pretty much out of liquid. Um, so it's time to take it off the heat. So I'm going to take my quinoa off the heat. I have some stuck to the bottom, so I'm just scraping them and they're not burned or anything. They're just barely stuck. So I just remove them, keep it on the side, turn off my um, stove top. And then, so now that we have all the ingredients ready to go, what we want to do is that we want to make the salad dressing. So I have this little nice bowl here where I'm going to be mixing my dressing. Um, so what I'm going to do is first I'm going to add two tablespoons of olive oil. So again, I have my measuring tablespoon here. Here's one tablespoon. Here's two. And next I'm going to add quarter teaspoon um, of salt. And I'm going to add uh, the oregano, which specifically is um, how much oregano? Half tablespoon. So I have that over here, the salt and the oregano. I'm going to add it as well. And then next I'm going to add the crushed pepper. I'm going to add my pepper here. And then cilantro and jalapeno. I'm just going to use my knife blade to transfer my greens. Okay, and then now I'm going to add the tahini and the apple cider vinegar. So I'm going to grab the tahini from the fridge real quick. So it's already pre-measured, and specifically we have one tablespoon of that. So I'm going to add it in. And then I'm going to add the three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And I'm just going to whisk, actually not mix, so I need a whisk. Where is it? It's right here. So I got my whisk right here. I'm just going to whisk everything so it's homogenous. Olive oil, tahini, apple cider vinegar, salt, oregano, oregano, jalapeno, cilantro. I think I got everything. It smells really, really good, although I have my mask on, but it's very fragrant that I can still smell it. Pretty good, looking very homogenous. That's what it looks like. I don't know if you can see it. Alrighty, so I'm going to put that on the side. If you're not planning on eating your salad right away, um, or if you're not planning on using the dressing, um, I would just cover that with some saran wrap and put it in the fridge. Um, I think it would last for about two days. Um, it's good to just you know keep it for two days, and then um, if you don't consume it within two days, Throw it out, make another one. It's pretty simple as we've seen. Just a few steps, a few slicing and dicing here and there. Um, super nice and easy. So next we are ready to actually make our salad, put it together. So over here I have the serving bowl that I'm going to be using. And I'm going to grab my quinoa. 
So my pan is nice and warm so I can hold it with my hands, but please be careful, yours is not. I'm just gonna, using these tongs to transfer my squash over here, just make it a little bit quicker. And those red things, it's it's not burnt, it's actually the paprika. It's giving it that nice red color that we see on some of the red squash over here, or um, red squash, acorn squash. So I have the I have the squash here, and then I'm gonna add my cooked quinoa. And then we have the microgreens over here. And for this recipe in the participant packet that was sent to you guys, uh, you kind of have like in the ingredient list exactly what each recipe has been recommended, which microgreens to be used. Um, and over here, I believe I'm using uh, the carrots and the mustard microgreens. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you can use any microgreens you want in this recipe or for that matter, any other recipe. So we have half a cup of microgreens over here and I'm just gonna add it over here to my salad. Next thing, I'm just gonna mix it. Oops. I always have a hard time with these tongs. There we go. You know, maybe using a bigger bowl would help. <laughs> But here I am, I did it. It's just the right size, so it's a little bit challenging to get everything in the bowl or to keep everything in the bowl while mixing. So I'm just mixing all the ingredients together. And then, again, it's up to you if you want to use the dressing or not. I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, add it on there now. And then mix just a little bit more because it's not really liquidy. So it's, it's not like a vinegar sort of, you know, olive oil dressing. It's a little bit viscous. So you just really need to mix it in there. Make sure you have it coating the rest of the salad. All right, everyone, so if you're coming along with us, I just want to make sure we take the shortbread out of the fridge and put that in the oven at 375 and put that in the timer on there for about 15 to 17 minutes. I've known that it takes at least me like 17 to almost 20 minutes. So I just want to give you guys a heads up and definitely put that in the oven. Perfect. Thanks, Megan. So just to reiterate, just make sure you take out your shortbread and place it in your um in your fridge, excuse me, in your oven at 375. All right, and here's the finished salad over here. So I'm gonna put it in the fridge just until, you know, it's time to eat. And then in the meantime, I'm gonna hand it off to Annie to finish the soup recipe. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the soup. We've got our broccoli and onions and garlic in our pan. Test the pan, make sure it's not hot before you grab it. Um, if it is, go ahead and grab it just with a hot pad. Uh, once we do, once we've got it in our hands, we are going to take a spoon to help us put it into the blender. So I've got my blender here. You can use a food processor as well, um, if that's what you have. But you're gonna get all of that broccoli into the blender to the best of your ability. And now we're gonna go ahead and add our other ingredients. Mine are all measured out, but you need about half a can of cannellini beans, a little bit softer beans, so they'll add um, great texture to our soup. They've also got a really good flavor. So go ahead, put those in the blender as well. Then you're gonna add, you should have about an ounce and a half of feta cheese. I've got an ounce, or a little over an ounce and a half here. I'm gonna leave 
just a little bit, maybe like a quarter of it afterward um, for when we uh, garnish the soup once it's already heated up and ready to go. If you don't want to leave some to garnish, you don't have to, but that is up to you. So the rest of what's in my bowl here, I'm going to go ahead and put that one in the blender as well. Um, wouldn't be soup if we didn't add broth. So we have two cups already pre-measured, but it is a low sodium veggie broth. Going to add a lot of flavor without having as much salt as a regular broth would have as well. All right. Last thing that we are going to add is we're going to add in the juice from about half of a lemon. Let's go ahead and just cut that lemon in half and then just squeeze it into your blender. If you want to measure out if you have like a bottle of lemon juice, you can do that as well. Aim for about a little two tablespoons to about a quarter of a cup or an eighth of a cup. Once it's in our blender, we are going to put the lid on, making sure it's stably connected to the base and fully closed at the top so you don't get soup all over. Then turn that blender on and go ahead, blend until it's all smooth. If you're concerned it might not be, go ahead and check it. If you still see quite a few pieces of broccoli or chunks of anything else, you can go ahead and re-blend um, re it. But mine looks pretty good. Um, you can see we've got kind of a smooth consistency. There is a little bit of texture there, but that's to be expected because we're putting a lot of veggies um, and fibrous foods into that blender. Now we're going to add it to a medium saucepan. Um, Go ahead and get that poured in. Then from here, you are good to just let it sit. So go ahead and wait to turn that on until we're almost done, just so that it's nice and warm when we're ready to eat it. So now I am going to go back to, I'm going to go to Heather, who's going to help us with the chicken skewers um, with microgreen so chimichurri. So all right, so like Annie said, we're doing the chicken skewers with the microgreen chimichurri. Um, we're going to start by working with the chicken first. So I've already washed my hands, but make sure you wash your hands thoroughly for 20 seconds with warm soapy water before you handle the raw chicken. So once your hands are clean, you can bring out your chicken. We're going to cut it into one inch cubes. Again, practicing those good knife skills like Nancy and Annie have been telling us. And if you have a preference for to use meat, a meatless option, you can use tofu for this. Um, there's also plant-based chicken out there, um, but you'll need to prepare that according to the instructions on the package, um, just so you don't end up with something that's too dry or undercooked. Again, along the lines of food safety, if you're making this recipe using frozen chicken, make sh the safest way to defrost chicken is to do it in your refrigerator. Um, so you want to plan ahead for that, and definitely you want to store it on the bottom shelf and make sure any prepared foods, ready to eat foods, are stored above it, just so you minimize any risk of raw chicken juice dripping onto your food. Be pretty gross. <laughs> All right, so I have some pieces that ended up a little bit bigger than one inch just because there's variations in the thicknesses of the chicken breast, so I'm just going to cut those down to one inch. 
And then from there, to grab a bowl. So from here, we're going to use olive oil, um, lemon juice, salt, and pepper. And we're going to, instead of putting it on the skewers like the recipe says, we're just going to put it in the bowl and then let it marinate while we prepare our chimichurri sauce. So. Um, you can also add veggies to your skewers. These are just chicken and chimichurri sauce skewers. So if you want to add some vegetables, cook them you could probably it would be better to grill them probably um, and then add them and you can cook them with the chicken um, and this recipe can be done on a grill so you make a, a good option for the summer and keep the heat down in your house all right add my olive oil Juice and salt and pepper. I'm going to mix those up a little bit with my hands. Um, and since we are going to the chimichurri sauce right after working with the raw chicken, uh, absolutely wash your hands thoroughly in between. All right, so that. Aside for now, and if you're preparing chicken alongside vegetables, make sure you and you only have one cutting board. Make sure you use the cutting board for your vegetables first before you move on to your raw chicken. Um, because you can, if you cut the chicken first, you can cross contaminate with your vegetables, and that's not really safe. Remove this, and I'm going to wash my hands again. I was just working on chicken. Going to grab my blender real quick. This section has a little low counter. There you go. Microgreens are red wine vinegar, uh, clove of garlic, uh, lemon juice, olive oil, and salt. And we're just going to blend it. So I'm going to add all these in here. Place in a specific way. Let me try to figure it out. It was locked. It was locked, guys.
just going to put this into a bowl and we're going to set it aside in the fridge. While we put the chicken on the skewers. Okay. Yep, I did that last time too. I forgot about it. Okay, and then um, I'm going to get my pan heating up. Um, so you want to cook it on, set it to medium heat. And it'll take a minute or two to heat up. So, and this one, that's about... About a six. I can't. It's hard to see the numbers on this one, but then I need to start putting my chicken on the skewers. You want to divide the amount of chicken onto your skewers as evenly as possible. Now, definitely be careful not to accidentally stab your fingertips on your skewers. That definitely hurt. If you have bigger pieces of chicken, you can kind of balance out the amount on your skewer by putting on smaller pieces of chicken. If you've got a really big piece right here, just a few small pieces of them. And depending on the size of the chicken breast you use, you may have more than what, um, more chicken than will fit on four skewers, so you can just use more skewers. these on the plate while my can heats up here. Um, for the chimichurri sauce, if you have any left over after your chicken skewers, um, it would be good as a salad dressing. And you can also, any leftover chicken you have, you can put it on top of rice with the chimichurri. And just reuse some leftovers for new meal combinations and ideas. Let's go to take a minute to get all the chicken on the skewers. Just have enough chicken for four skewers. So, something that you can do after, again, along the lines of food safety, after you finish. Getting your chicken on the skewers in there in the pan and cooking is 
Uh, wipe down your counters. Disinfect them just because we have been working with raw meat. It's just a good practice to keep those air those surfaces clean and sanitized. Alright. So the pan is hot now. So we're going to cook these for five minutes. And we're going to rotate them so that each side of the chicken is getting cooked. But we'll do that at five minutes. I'm going to wash my hands real quick. Again, this is you're working with. Um, Something a good tip would be um, check your skewers with your pan before you start cooking. Make sure that they're short enough to fit in the pan. Um, I wasn't able to do that with this recipe, so my skewers are a little bit long. That's probably going to take a little bit longer. If you're using a grill and you're using bamboo skewers, you definitely want to get a soak them beforehand. Sorry, I'm trying to break my skewers a little bit here so they fit the pan better. Um, soaking them will prevent the skewers from burning on the grill. Um, if you're using them in an oven, you to do the same as well. Um, Andy, did you need to interrupt real quick? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now's a great time to go ahead and put that soup on. Um, I'm going to put it I'm on a low to medium heat around, around level four on my stove. Depending on the power of your stove, you may want to go a little bit lower than that or a little bit higher if it tends to be kind of slow to heat up. But we're going to go on four, cook for about 10 or so minutes. You want to see small bubbles um, starting to rise from the soup to indicate that it's simmering. Let it simmer for about a minute or two and then go ahead and take it off and we'll garnish with our microgreens, our feta, and our um, sense, uh, sunflower seeds. Perfect and while that is both those things are on the stove let's take out that shortbread. It should be nice and golden on the top. I'm placing my chicken guard so it's nice and easy to cut. So I'm going to cut it right when it's still warm. I'll show you. So the recipe calls for six slices. I'm just going to do an eight since mine is a square pan. Just make sure to cut that nice and easy. And down the middle and the sides as well. 
All right, so now that's, now that that's all sliced up, uh, place it on a cooling rack to cool. I'm just gonna place it on the top of the oven. Make sure to turn your oven off now. We're not gonna use it anymore. And that is it. So let that, that cool and we can have that enjoy it later. So make sure you don't touch it for 15 minutes. Thank you. One side is cooked already. Just grab the okay. um, if you have no skewers at home, you can use those as well, especially for grilling. Um, make nice. It's a nice reusable option for your skewers. It didn't quite split all the way when I turned it. And once these are cooked through, we're going to attempt them to make sure that they up to 165 to ensure that we cook our chicken fully until it's safe to consume. Go ahead, Annie. Those are needed. I don't actually have anything else to add. We're just going to cook the soup for 10 minutes and then we'll go ahead and garnish. dial thermometer. Um, they make these as, as digital thermometers as well. Um, and they're pretty nice to use for temping your foods. Whenever you cook raw meat, you should temp your foods to make sure it's safe to consume. Um, this one, and it was probably hard to see from the distance, but it has different levels on it that have the different temperatures for different meats and it indicates which meats those temps are for. So that can be a, a good tool to have in your kitchen. I'm going to rotate my chicken again. Make sure all the sides are getting cooked. It's getting cooked pretty slowly. One more time. If the chicken doesn't temp at 165, we'll just let it cook a little bit longer so that we get it to that internal temperature that we want it at. I'm going to grab one of these skewers that has a really big piece of chicken on it. And I'm going to temp that chicken at the thick, on the thickest piece without touching the skewer or the plate. Because that will throw off my temperature. So 
the nice thing about the digital versions of these thermometers is they tend to get the temp very quickly. All right, our temperature is coming up to 170, so we're good to take it off the heat and take it. Ooh, good in here. Go ahead and turn off your seat. As well. And then we're going to get our chimichurri sauce from the refrigerator and drizzle it over our skewers. Mine is a little bit clumpy still, so if you would like a texture that's a little bit finer, you just blend it for a little bit longer when you're prepping your chimichurri sauce. Um, and if you want to avoid big chunks of garlic in your chimichurri sauce, you could probably, you can mince the garlic beforehand as well. And, you know, help it spread a little bit more evenly throughout the sauce. Alrighty. And there we have our chicken skewers with Jimmy Cherry. From a food safety standpoint, why are microgreens safe to eat? Um, for the question on microgreens versus sprouts, um, currently I don't know the answer, so we'll have to get back to you on that one. I apologize for that. Start packing up some of the dishes here. Perfect, everyone. So your shortbread should be nice and cooked. I planted it nice and cute with a little some basil leaves. So it should be nice and decadent. It should really round out this meal today. I hope you guys had a great time and thank you for coming. So the soup should be simmering by this point. Again, like I said, small bubbles. Looking for movement, you can also, if you want, test the temperature to see if it's hot enough for you. I tested mine about a minute ago and it looks pretty good, pretty ready to eat. So I'm gonna go ahead and dish out some soup and we can show just how to garnish it. Um, so I'll go ahead, get some of my soup and put it in my bowl. All right, guys, and over here, I have showed my salad. It's nice and ready, so we um, have all of the dishes for tonight. And just circling back to the question from the participant about the safety of eating microgreens versus uh, sprouts. So I did look up some sources online and uh, the difference in the, in the in the food safety making microgreens safer to eat is that um, in the process of growing the microgreens, they um, are exposed to a better environment where they have more ventilation and air circulation um, that, uh, from my understanding, uh, decreases the um, chances of having um, 
um, like a suitable um, environment for bacteria to harbor and to grow on the microgreens. That's what I read so far. I'm not an expert. I'm not 100% certain just to uh, put that out there. This is just from my two minute reading that I did. Um, so again, I would, you know, double check on that. Don't call me on that. Uh, that's just what I read from a two minute read on Google. Um, but I just wanted to get back to you with what I've read. I'm not recommending anything. I'm just saying that this is what I read. Again, I just wanted um, to clarify that. Um, so again, with all the recipes that we have um, shown tonight, um, we have made the chicken skewers and we have made the squash salad. We have made the soup and the shortbread. I hope you guys who, uh, for those of you who have cooked with us, that you stayed on the, on the same pace with us and have or are done with your recipes just as we are. And for those of you who are just watching, um, I hope you've enjoyed watching us tonight and that you are motivated to get going and making these uh, recipes sometime, uh, sometime soon. We want to thank you for tagging along and for cooking with us tonight or watching us. And also we want to thank Dakota uh, for um, arranging our uh, call tonight and for mediating um, our meeting. Yes, thank you all right back. Thank you, Nancy, Heather, Megan, and Annie. It was wonderful learning from all of you. Um, for all of those watching or for anyone who might have missed it, um, this is going to be living on our YouTube channel. It's shareable and watchable if you want to. You didn't cook along this time, but you want to next time. The recipes and information will be sent to you as well, so you're able to access this um, and continue to keep up the good cooking over the holidays. So thank you all so much for joining us. We hope you have a great night. Thank you. Bye.